Hello, my name is Colin Fife. I am a current graduate student in clinical psychology at San Francisco State University. As my title suggests, Emotional Disclosure, Rethinking the Ways Masculinity Impacts the Willingness to be Vulnerable, I will be talking about the relationship between masculinity and emotional well-being today. I want to start off by acknowledging that males are often under pressure to adhere to masculinity norms. Research has shown males are experiencing poor psychological and emotional health, such as poor life satisfaction, increased substance use behaviors, and lower college graduation rates. Mentioned disparities are attributed to the adherence to masculinity norms. Specifically, males have learned to engage in maladaptive emotional responses. The goal of my study is to better understand the context in which males may be more likely to engage in these maladaptive emotional responses. I want to start about talking about the construct of masculinity and how it has evolved from being regarded as a fixed entity to now a precarious social status. Specifically, manhood is regarded as a social status that is hard won, easy lost, and requires continual demonstrations of proof. By understanding the structure of manhood as an anxiety provoking status that can be lost has led to further insights about manhood. Specifically, that masculine ideologies understood as the intrapsychic attitudes that quantify acceptable and non-acceptable behaviors are defining features for how a precarious status is upheld. Furthermore, when masculine ideologies are threatened, exposing males as insufficiently masculine or cause them to fail to fulfill gender role expectations, males can lose their sense of manhood. One particular threat is the ways males experience and express their emotions with others, what I term being vulnerable. Males are emotionally socialized in accordance with masculine ideologies. When males engage in atypical emotional gender behaviors, such as being emotionally expressiveness, they're likely to experience repercussions of belittlement, shame, and punishment. Males have adapted to minimize such experiences by engaging in emotional repertoires that are more aligned with their sense of masculinity, such as engaging in the anti-feminine mandate, which is disengaging any effeminate behaviors that might put their sense of masculinity at risk. Males are also more likely to engage in emotional restrictiveness, the behavioral practice of neither sharing nor experiencing open emotional states with others, such as being vulnerable. When males experience a gender threat, they exhibit the following reactions that mean to gain their manhood back. Such reactions include increased anxiety and stress about their gender, heightened aggression and risk-taking behaviors, higher tendency to self-perceive their gender in stereotypical ways, and engagement in the anti-feminine mandate and emotional restrictiveness. Furthermore, Research has shown males are more likely to conform to hegemonic masculine ideals as an attempt to protect the anger group identity from an easy to lose status. The present study examined whether a perceived threat to masculinity affected males, males willingness to be emotionally vulnerable and whether this association is moderated by the degree to which individuals conform to masculinity norms. There were two hypotheses. The first hypothesis was males who experience a threat to their gender will be less willing to be emotionally vulnerable, specifically less likely to report emotional states associated with vulnerability, less likely to disclose distressing information to others, and have more negative attitudes about emotional expression. The second hypothesis was the strengths of these associations will be moderated by the degree to which individuals conform to masculinity norms. I used an experimental manipulation as my design in this study. Participants completed an online questionnaire through Qualtrics. After completion of basic demographic information, participants then completed the pre-manipulation conformity to masculinity norms. Participants were then subjugated to the experimental manipulation, where they completed a measure assessing their gender identity on a continuous scale of masculine to feminine. This scale was never scored, but instead, upon completion, participants received bogus feedback on their self-rating of gender identity. They were either primed with having a masculine identity, as indicated on the left, or they were primed with having a feminine identity, as indicated on the right. Afterwards, participants completed three post-manipulation measures that assessed their willingness to be vulnerable. These measures included the PAN-SX, the Distress to Closure Index, and Attitudes Towards Expressive Scale, Emotional Expressive Scale. There were 36 
participants used for analyses. Four participants were excluded due to missing data outliers. The mean age was 25.1 years. As you see in the ethnicity, this is a good representation of what is typically found on the SFSU campus. Analysis of variance, correlation, and regression models were used to answer the hypothesis questions. To answer hypothesis question one, independent samples t-test analysis were conducted to assess the difference between those that received feminine feedback compared to those that received masculine feedback. As shown in table two, there was no statistical difference between the two groups. This indicates that the threat to masculinity presented in the study had no effect on outcome related to emotional vulnerability. To answer hypothesis two, linear regression models assessing the interaction effects between conformity to masculinity norms and negative affect, distress disclosure, and expressive attitudes was done. Looking at the graphs in each models, you can see the lines are nicely parallel to one another, but they do not intersect indicating that no interactions were significant. There were, however, two main effects on conforming, on mas conforming to masculinity on negative affect and expressive attitudes, suggesting that individuals who were high in conforming masculine norm also were high on expressing or reporting negative affect, and individuals that were also high on conformity also reported high on negative emotional attitudes. The findings indicate that the threat context did not, did not experience a need for males to restore their sense of masculinity or engage in maladaptive emotional responses. Conforming to masculinity norms did not moderate the association between threat and willingness to be vulnerable. Furthermore, regardless of condition, conforming masculine norms had main effects. One of the main limitations was the sample size where power wasn't met. Additionally, Participants were recruited at a historic progressive university and then furthermore in a discipline that fosters more flexibility around gender norm behavior. Future directions would ensure that a minimum of 220 participants were used for analysis, additionally recruiting from a community-based sample. So the takeaway is important to continue to build on the present study by addressing the limitations noted above. Provided there is limited research on precarious manhood and emotional health, continuing with further research would help understand the context that predisposes males to engage in maladaptive emotional responses. Thank you so much for listening to my share.